Hey guys, this week I am going to start to modify and uh, cut off the back half of the CB550, well not back half, but uh, put in our frame hoop. It did uh, come in this week and also my seat came in. So, and I apologize if the audio is weird. It's really crappy and cold and rainy outside. Um, so I'm leaving the door closed. But here's my tough side seat. I don't know if you can see. I'm leaving the plastic on it for now, but I went with a, uh, a dark brown leather with a saddle, which is like a tan, kind of darkish tan uh, stitching. So that's going to look really good. It's the exact same seat I had on my last 550, um, so I know the quality is really good. You know, it's easy to make mounts for, and it's comfortable, and it fits well, and you know, the frame hoop fits perfect, and you know, it's a really good quality seat. I've had a lot of people ask me about the seat. Um, and this is just their Honda style uh, flat, universal flat seat. Um, so they do make a bigger one that's a little bit wider, maybe a little bit longer too for bigger Hondas like CP750s. Then they have a Yamaha style one. Uh, and then they have this one which is perfect for the 550s. Um, so we are going to start to chop the back end of that off. I already have a video uh, on my channel from earlier on my last bike of how to do it. So I'm not going to go into the details of step-by-step -step how to chop the back half off because, uh, like I said, I've already done it. So I will throw a card up here um, so you can go back and check that video out if you want to see exactly step-by-step -step how to kind of cut it off and modify it and measure and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and knock that out. Um, and then I'll do the seat mounts. And then after that, if I have time, I will get to work on the uh, electronics uh, tray box thing. I'm going to try to make it a little bit smaller than my last one. I'm using the exact same battery, um, which I'll put a link in the description to the battery because I always get questions about that. Um, and we are going to uh, attempt to TIG weld it as well because I did get my TIG welder in. And so far, um, well, I'm, I guess I'm picking it up pretty quickly because my welds look pretty darn good. They already look better than my MIG welds. So... I'm gonna attempt to TIG weld it on, and if it doesn't work out well, then we'll MIG weld over it and grind it all, and yeah, it'll be it'll be just fine. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do this week. So like I said, I'm not gonna do real step by step, um, but I'll uh, you know throw a little time lapse or something, and I will uh, bring you guys back as I go uh, if anything you know goes not according to plan. So cool, let's get started. I bring you guys in for a little bit of an update. I have all the uh, electronics pulled out and kind of tucked off to the side out of the way. Uh, then I just chopped off the rear section of the frame as you can see right here. So what I did for measurements on this is I just took my little six inch scale ruler, whatever you want to call it, and to try to get a similar um, measurement on both sides. I just went off of this back mount right here and I went three inches 
back from that and then did the same thing on this side and went three inches back on that one. So I think that's gonna work out pretty well. Um, the main thing you're trying to do here is just get to the circular you know, frame portion. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to focus in here. But inside of here, you can kind of hopefully see that circle in there. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that's what we really want to uh, butt up the new hoop to and, uh, and weld to is that, you know, circular part in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take my angle grinder and a cutoff wheel and just trim off the top of this frame portion right here just to get down to that actual, um, you know, circular part in there so I can run a weld kind of all the way around it and know that I'm going directly to it. Um, so that's gonna be kind of the ideal way to do it. That way you can have a nice clean weld all the way along here, all the way around, you know, you can have it nice and secure. Um, if you get a nice quality uh, frame hoop, they will come with little, uh, what would you call that? Uh, slug, I guess. I don't know. A, a piece of smaller tubing that can go in here. I think I have some over here on my scrap metal shelf. Yeah, right here. <clears throat> so this is what I'm talking about here, if I can get it to focus. Um, basically, it's just not going to focus. There we go. Um, this part goes into like the stock frame and this part goes into the hoop and that just adds a little bit more support uh, right in your connection point. So um, I'll probably throw those in on this one just to uh, you know have extra measure, extra strength in there. Um, sometimes the stock frame is a little bit oval shaped so you may have to uh, you know put a screwdriver in there or clamp it or you know you might have to kind of fudge it a little bit to uh, to get that slug to fit in there but between that and then welding all around here it'll be plenty plenty strong I mean my last bike I did I didn't even put the slugs in and you could easily pick up the whole bike you know from the frame hoop with no flexing or anything whatsoever so yep that's gonna be the plan now is kind of trim off that top portion and then uh, you know get ready to actually fit the frame hoop and I will uh, I'll bring you back uh, when I do that portion, just so I can uh, kind of show you again how I measure it and make sure that it fits properly and, um, you know, fits directly under the seat and, uh, and, and fits really nice. So, yep, I'll bring you back uh, when we're ready to, uh, to measure the hoop and start uh, cutting that down. So, yeah, as you can see, I chopped uh, just the top of that frame rail off uh, and exposed the tube underneath without cutting into the tube. It's a little bit of a, a delicate operation, but... If you take your time with a, a cutoff wheel, you know, it's not too hard to do. So now you can see how the tube is going to butt up perfectly to it. So we'll be able to run a weld, you know, all the way down here, all the way across the seam and all the way around. And then grind this down, grind this factory weld down, and it'll be nice smooth tube all the way across. You won't even be able to tell uh, where the stock frame, you know, ends and the, and the new hoop begins. So that's kind of the, the point of this is to be able to weld it all in and then grind it all super smooth so that you cannot tell uh, at all that it's not, uh, not a factory piece. So um, just keep in mind, don't <laughs> weld this yet, obviously, um, because this hoop does come long intentionally. Uh, as you can see, you know, if I were to throw the seat on here, the back of this thing is like, you know, an inch and a half or two inches too long. So, you know, your ideal thing here is to uh, to have that hoop be a little bit long so that you can, you know, trim it as needed. So that's going to be the next step. What I'm going to do is take this off. Then I'm going to throw the seat. I'm going to throw the seat on and have it exactly where I want it to go. I'm going to measure from this point right here, right in the center, all the way to the back where I want the end of this hoop to, uh, to be. So it's going to be, you know, right up to the back of the seat, basically. I'm going to measure that distance. And, you know, say it's nine and a half inches, something like that. That's how long I know I want my tube to be from this point, you know. So 
I'll, I'll kind of have to show you when I do it, but basically you just want to measure from, you know, here to the end of the seat so you can get an idea of when you put the hoop up there, you know, you match that distance and then you can mark your tube where you need to, uh, to cut it. So that's how you uh, measure to make sure it fits perfectly is you have to have the seat flat and perfectly in place. I'll have to cut these little tabs off first too so it sits exactly where I want it to be. Uh, then I can measure and chop my tube and then we can start to clean everything up and, uh, and get it ready for welding followed by you know cutting off all these factory little brackets that uh, we don't want anymore. So. Okay hopefully you guys can uh, kind of see what I'm doing here. just want to show you again the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the seat on and make sure it's perfectly lined up. Make sure it's as far forward as you want it to be. You want it to be right about there. You know, make sure you leave yourself a little bit of a gap to be able to get your tank on and off. And okay, so that looks pretty good. Lined up on the sides. So now take a tape measure and measure from that center bracket I showed you earlier right to the back of this seat right in the center of that bracket right to the back of the seat mine comes in at exactly 14 inches so the 14 inches on on a tough side seat there's a little bit of a lip right here that uh, the bar can kind of sit right into so right to the back of that lip is 14 inches uh, which is pretty you know easy size to remember so let me double check it again Yeah, I think 14 inches is going to be going to be perfect. I may may end up doing it a little bit shorter than 14. But once you get that measurement, then you can pull this off. Take your hoop, kind of put it, you know, where it's going to go. Hold it there and then do the same measurement again. And then now you're looking to match this hoop up with your measurement you had before so that the end of this hoop hopefully you can see that the end of this hoop is right at what the measurement was you just had so we'll do 14 inches which is right there so you can either you know use a sharpie and mark it right here what i like to do is actually measure it that way i know i can easily duplicate it um, on both sides so that we keep this thing perfectly square Otherwise, if I mark it here and mark it there, you know, it may be tilted just a little bit and it can really start to throw it off. So once you have that measurement, again, we're going to put it up here at 14 inches, which is right there. Then we can look at our tube and see exactly how much we're going to have to cut off. So that's all you got to do. I believe mine's going to be right at about two inches I'm going to cut off. Two inches yeah it's gonna be right about two inches off this tube so we'll get those measurements mark it on the tube and then uh, cut it but that's how you uh, you get this thing perfectly lined up and make sure it stays square uh, then again you can have some flexibility if you want to cut this a little bit long you know maybe only cut you know if you need two inches maybe only cut uh, you know one and three quarter inches off that way you can kind of test fit it you could even go as far as tacking this into place and then putting your seat on again and just measure it and you know, leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room just in case you know one of your measurements was off or you got to tweak it or whatever um, you know it's always better to have too much and have to trim a little bit more off than have to try to add metal to uh, to extend it out farther so that's what we're going to do now ended up chopping right at uh, two and a quarter inches off of this tube uh, to get to our 14 inch there we go right at 14 inches to the end of the tube so that's what this particular hoop needed it was right at two and a quarter inches you can see it fits nicely I mean that's gonna be pretty easy of course I can't get it to focus that's gonna be pretty easy to TIG weld for sure even for a, a TIG newbie like me I mean that's a nice easy f clean I'm obviously gonna have to clean it up but nice easy seam on both sides um, so that's going to go go really well. I'm excited to uh, to use my TIG to be able to do that.
So I'll show you how the seat itself fits. And of course I still have the plastic on here because I don't want to get it all dirty, but. So good fitment up on the front and then the tube doesn't fall out. Right here on the back, it just, I don't know if you can see that, just goes into that lip. So it's really tight fit all the way around. Uh, and on these CB550 frames, these rear hoops do slope up a little bit. So when you go to weld it, make sure you, you know, put in that little up kind of slope on the back. So you just make sure it matches up perfectly with that stock tube that's in there and it'll have just a little bit i mean just a couple of degrees of upslope and the beauty of those tough side seats is they are designed uh, to you know match that they do bend just a little bit uh, in order to uh, to match that slope so if you have a seat that doesn't bend at all um, you know you can weld this on flat it's uh it's not ideal but you know it's not going to be super noticeable but to get a really really good fit you do want this to slope up just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and take the grinder and cutoff wheel and cut off a lot of these factory brackets. Then I'm gonna use my flap disc and re clean all this up, clean all, you know, clean everything up really, really well and get it ready for uh, welding. Then I'll probably use both my welders. Just, I'll probably throw the MIG uh, over here and just hit it two tack welds, probably right on the top um that way i can pivot it and make sure i get that slope just perfect uh fit the seat for like you know a fourth time just to make sure 100 sure it fits the way i want it to and then i'll roll a tig welder over here and uh you know lay some beads uh, across there uh, then yeah that's it so i'm gonna go ahead and get to cleaning up and everything uh, and chopping off the rest of these little tabs and stuff we're not going to use ground this all nice and clean I've like triple checked and triple measured um, so what I'm gonna do is like I said I'm gonna throw quick two MIG tacks right on the top here so I still have some adjustability this way and then uh, once that's good then we'll switch over to TIG and, and finish it off grab my helmet got those tacks on there like I said I can still you know get some movement this way if I need it but I'm gonna give those just a couple more seconds to uh, cool down we're gonna throw our seat on Let's see how she fits up oh yeah and again, like I said, it's got that swoop, but when you bolt the seat down, see how it kind of goes down like that? That's what gets you that nice, you know, factory looking fit. Otherwise, if your seat was straight, you'd have this big gap right here. So the swoop looks really nice. Yeah, that's looking really good. Let's get you guys a, a better shot of that. Here's your up close shot. So just picture that being kind of sucked down a little bit. And you can see it fits right up nicely right in the little edge on the back of the seat so that's going to be it's going to be perfect right there so you can see from this angle that little kind of up sweep i was talking about so cool well i'm going to go ahead and switch out fire up the tig and uh 
I'm gonna TIG weld uh, for the first time on a motorcycle. So here we go. Full disclosure, this will be my, really my second time ever TIG welding. Uh, I practiced for probably two hours the first day I got this and I'm not the kind of person to just keep waiting and practicing and practicing. I'd rather just go for it. And like I said, if it turns out awful, I can grind it down and run a, um, you know, MIG weld over it. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Could turn out terrible, but we'll see either way. Again, I'm probably going to run a second bead over the top of these just to be, you know, triple sure that uh, they're nice and secure. But the fit was so close. I mean, hell, I probably could have done the whole thing without any filler material whatsoever. But I'm going to let these uh, cool and then uh, we'll run another bead over the top. Welding is complete. So hopefully you can see this. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Very obviously I already ground these down because they, you know, they weren't pretty enough to uh, to show off or anything, but they definitely, uh, you could tell they definitely penetrated really well. And, um, you know, they're gonna be super, super strong for sure because that fit was so close, like I said, I, I barely even needed to use any filler metal. They just melted them together, and then I did a second, you know, bead over the top of it just, you know, to be 100% sure it got nice coverage and, you know, penetration and everything. So, now as you can see, you know, ground down, it's hard to tell where, you know, the stock, sorry, the focus is going a little crazy, where the uh, stock piece, you know, ends and the uh, the aftermarket hoop begins so and we still have our nice little swoop up there so i still have a lot of grinding to do i am going to be cutting out this middle brace but i wait to do that so that it keeps everything nice and square and where it's supposed to be while you get the hoop in um, so i'll be chopping that off and then a whole heck of a lot of grinding of all the little edges where all the tabs were and all that kind of stuff which is really you know, boring to watch. You guys know what it looks like to grind something off. So um, that's going to be this part. Uh, after I'm done removing everything, I'm going to move on to, uh, I bought some bar stock run across for uh, my seat mounts. Uh, very, very similar to uh, what I did on my last bike. But uh, I'll bring you guys back after I uh, start to chop stuff off and, you know, grind it and start making things nice and smooth. So I uh, ground everything nice and smooth. Um, and all the little tabs are gone, so it's really nice and clean now. Um, so what I'm going to do is make these uh, seat brackets here. Oh, this is where the actual uh, seat is going to mount. So there's a real good chance that's going to fall here in a second. Um, so what I did, the tough side seat comes with some threaded holes. Uh, then they sell a kit to put these. Um, Kind of it's like all thread almost like it's basically just a allen on the top and then it's just a threaded kind of bar and there comes with a whole you know a whole bunch of them so i've actually mounted this will be the third seat i've mounted with just one of their kits um, so what i did is i throw those in you know thread them in then i throw the seat on and i make little sharpie marks on the side um, you know the side of each frame where the mounting 
kind of tabs, or not tabs, but mounting uh, bolts, I guess you call them, um, line up. Then I measure in between there, and then I cut these bars uh, to length. These are um, probably a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. They're pretty thick. They're going to be more than strong enough uh, once they're welded in. So the idea here is just to have the two bars across, you know, under the uh, kind of top plane of the bar itself, the actual tube. So they do sit down a little bit. Uh, but still not you know right in the middle so they still have some kind of support on each side as you can see they're standing you know sitting there right now without being welded yet so right now what I'm going to do is uh, hook up the welder and then go ahead and weld these in place then we'll go back and put the seat back on and mark where the holes are then we can drill the four holes through the bar once it's already mounted uh, then we'll be uh, done with mounting that then the next step after that is going to be to start to build our uh, electronics tray all right guys the uh, seat is mounted so um, I showed you how I put the bars on there and then I drilled the four holes and it's a bit tedious to do that uh, because you know those holes don't allow for really any adjustment after you know the mounts are put through them I mean, you could cut a little slot in there and then have some adjustment in it, but um, I like to really take my time here and make sure that you get the gap around this bar to the seat exactly uniform on both sides. That way it fits, you know, really nicely, exactly how you would want all the way around. Otherwise, you know, you can have a bigger gap on this side or a bigger gap on the back or whatever. You know, so those mounts are really, really important. So definitely take your time when you're doing it. This is the seat. I don't know if I've shown you guys it outside of the packaging, but it's the dark brown leather with the lighter tan stitching. So I think it's going to look really, really good. So, yep, yeah, seat is mounted. So um, that's going to be it for this video. On the next video, I'm going to work on the battery box, and then I'm also going to... Uh, work on maybe I don't know how I'm gonna do the rear light I'd love to incorporate the little LED strip that I have but then I also have this like I believe the guy got it from Dime City a little just kind of normal LED brake light I don't want to do the exact same thing I did on my last bike but I don't know we may do I was even messing around with this little piece of fender here that I kind of chopped down make like a little mini like Fenderette, I don't know what the hell you call it, but you know what I mean. A little tiny fender that we can mount the light on. I don't know, we're kind of messing around with that. Uh, so that'll be in the next video. Also might, depending on visibility when the wheel's on and stuff, integrate the turn signals into these little holes instead of capping them off. Then the turn signals will be on each side, but they'd have to be pretty bright to uh, actually be worth you know putting on an actual function. So. Yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I uh, appreciate you guys following along. As always, you know, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.